So this C40 Cities organisation that Sadiq Khan is the chair of, the flagship of, the leader of, want zero car ownership by 2030. So our Tory government right now are saying, Sadiq Khan, we think you need to have a proper look at your, your plans. Sadiq Khan has the power to push this through. And Sadiq Khan's goal that he's trying to achieve is financed by the government anyway. So we're all just being gaslit into believing that maybe we'll stop Sadiq Khan when actually the government are paying him to carry on through the C40 city agendas of which he is the leader. I mean, sure, many people have come out and said the Clinton body count is just a conspiracy theory and it's not true. But I don't have a conspiracy theory about how many people I've killed to get Jeff Bice cars to the top. They do. <laughs> I want to cry. Good afternoon and welcome to another important video. You will know that currently Sadiq Khan, the Mayor of London, is trying to push ahead with his ULES expansion plans, despite the fact that there is oodles of opposition and pretty much nobody wants him to implement the ULES expansion plans. There is one very good reason why he's pushing ahead and it's a bit scary. I'm going to talk you through it. Have you heard of C40 Cities? There's an organisation called C40 Cities, of which Sadiq Khan is the chairman. Last night, I decided to do some research on what this C40 Cities organisation is all about. And what I turned up is interesting. So, C40 Cities. The C40 is a network of mayor, mayors. I can't say the word mayors. The C40 is a network of mayors of near... Why is mayor such a hard word to say? The C40 is a network of mayors of nearly 100 world-leading cities collaborating to deliver the urgent action needed right now to confront the climate crisis. Together, we can create a future where everyone everywhere can thrive. Sounds great, isn't it? That's why C40's mission is to halve the emissions of its member cities within a decade while improving equity, building resilience and creating the conditions for everyone everywhere to thrive. Sounds good. It isn't. Mayors of the C40 cities are on the leading edge, bleeding edge, of climate action and are deploying a science-based and collaborative approach to help the world limit global heating to 1.5 degrees and build healthy, equitable and resilient communities. Deploying a science-based. Trust the science. Trust the science. Trust our science. Only our science. Don't question the science. The change we need can be delivered through our chair's vision for a global Green New Deal, where mayors are working alongside a broad coalition of representatives for labour business, the youth climate movement, brainwashed teenagers, and civil society to go further and faster than ever before. So, C40 Cities is a collaboration of mayors from around the world, cities around the world. There's 100 world leading cities and they're all working to the same targets and guidelines as to how they're going to reduce the impact of climate warming over the next decade. So the reason Sadiq Khan is so forcefully pushing through his ULES expansion, despite the fact that there's so much opposition, is because he is the chairman, the flagship, the leader of C40 cities. And if he fails in his bid to expand the ULES, then he will have failed in terms of the C40 cities goals. He is going to push it ahead regardless and it gets worse. So the C40 has some leadership standards. As I said, they want to, um, they're aligned with the 1.5 degree ambition of the Paris Agreement. Loads of stuff on that on YouTube. The leadership standards of the C40 is to plan, deliver, mainstream, innovate and other buzzwords and they want to deliver on the climate action plan they want to contribute to increase resilience equitable outcomes and halving c40's overall emissions by 2030 so they want to halve the emissions of 100 capital cities by 2030 how they're going to do that is a whole nother can of worms the city right the city uses the necessary necessary great word I'm hearing it a lot lately financial, regulatory and other tools at their disposal to address the climate crisis. They are going to use financial, regulation and other tools to address the climate crisis. 
That doesn't mean they're doing anything about the amount of trees that are being cut down in the rainforest. That doesn't mean they're doing anything about the amount of coal stations that are being used in China. That doesn't mean they're doing anything about the fact that the World Bank has stopped giving money to developing countries to develop clean energy. What it means is they're going to tax and fine you out of your car and they're going to regulate your personal freedom out of existence. More on this coming. So that's who the C40 cities are. OK, they're a body, a collaboration of mayors for different cities who are working to halve emissions in those cities. There's what's really interesting. And the reason this video might seem a little bit disjointed, because it is very confusing. And I think it's deliberately confusing. So there's three aspects to the C40 cities that I found. I did a lot of reading and I can't actually work out anything that they're actually going to do. However, Current car ownership per thousand people in the UK right now is 594. Right now, there's 594 cars per 1,000 people in the UK. This C40 City organisation has two targets. They have the target that's like, yeah, if we do OK, then we'd like to achieve this. And they have the target that's like, if we do really well, then we'll achieve this. And their targets for car ownership by 2030, the target of we're doing OK is 190 vehicles per 1,000, down from 594. Their optimum target is zero. So this C40 Cities organisation that Sadiq Khan is the chair of, the flagship of, the leader of, wants zero car ownership by 2030. So who's behind the C40 Cities who are pushing this agenda. Now, on their website, this is all publicly available. I found all of this out in one evening, okay? A couple of three hours on my computer, and I just sat there on the sofa. The wife was on her phone doing something, the kids were playing, and I just kept being like, oh my gosh, you're not going to believe this. I found another one. Oh my gosh, it gets better all night, and I'm going to show you why. I'm not going to edit this video too much, um, so just try and, try and stay with me. I appreciate that it, it's a bit all over the place because it gets confusing. So C40 Cities website lists three different categories. They have major funders, they have funders, and they have partners. So obviously the funders, major and minor, are people that are putting money into the C40 Cities. So these are people and organisations that want to see the C40 Cities agendas achieved. So who do you think might be pushing the climate thing? I would expect lots of people that are really, really highly concerned about the climate. Like, you know, these billionaire philanthropists who do genuinely care. The major funders of the C40 cities are the UK government through business, energy and industrial strategy. The BMU Federal Ministry for the Environment of Germany. The Ministry of Foreign Affairs in Denmark. ARUP the Clean Air Fund, the Climate Works Foundation, the Global Environment Facility, and the Grundfos Foundation. Okay? I haven't added many notes on those, but the next ones get interesting. I mean, the fact that the major funder of the C40 cities is the government. So our Tory government right now are saying, Sadiq Khan, we think you need to have a proper look at your, your plans. Sadiq Khan has the power to push this through, and Sadiq Khan's goal that he's trying to achieve is financed by the government anyway. So we're all just being gaslit into believing that maybe we'll stop Sadiq Khan when actually the government are paying him to carry on through the C40 city agendas of which he is the leader. Other major funders. I did this. I found the name of the major funder and I started to dig into the background of each one to see if there was anything untoward there. After I'd done this for about five different companies and organisations, I gave up doing that. And instead what I did was I googled the name of the thing that I'd found as a funder. And then I just either put controversy or scandal on the end of it. Because the results were the same. IKEA are a major funder of C40 cities. In terms of ethics, on ethicalconsumer.org, which I signed up for last night to do this research, they have a score of 6.5 which means they are not a very ethical company. The score is out of 15. IKEA only scores 6.5 on ethics. They're ranked in lots of different things. We know IKEA consume a horrendous amount of trees. We know IKEA make furniture. So if the C40 th cities thing really is, as I believe, about moving people from accommodation out in the sticks to mass confinement, well, those people are going to need furniture. I wonder who's going to build that. The Hewlett Foundation 
uh, the Hewlett Foundation, the liberal mega funder you should watch out for is the article that I found. I've documented the huge rivers of cash flowing from Hewlett to anti-Trump lobbying groups and the eco-right global warming advocates posing as free market conservatives while pushing decidedly statist policies such as carbon taxes and government subsidies for wind and solar power. Capitalresearch.org article, the Hewlett Foundation, the liberal med mega funder you should watch out for. Not the, um, you know, benevolent philanthropists that we were perhaps hoping that they would be. L'Oreal, the company L'Oreal, listed as a major funder. Ethical Consumer says, Our research highlights several ethical issues with L'Oreal, and we've awarded them negative marks in a number of categories on our scoring system, including four. Animal testing, climate change, poor environmental reporting, habitats and resource, pollutions, toxics, human rights, workers' rights, supply chain management, irresponsible marketing, anti-social finance, controversial technologies and political activities. These are financing the C40 cities who are the driving force behind you, Les. Companies with poor records on pollution, toxic and human rights are driving the environmental movement that is pushing us all out of our cars. It gets better or it gets worse. Listed as major funders, we have two more, Oak Foundation and Porticus. Oak Foundation, a shady Swiss foundation behind United States and Canadian cities suing energy companies for climate change. A Swiss organisation cloaked in secrecy is funding a front group in Canada, co-opting local governments to sue Canadian and American energy companies for alleged climate change damages. Post from the Washington Examiner. Yeah, another uh, Oak Foundation. Crikey, another another benevolent investment fund that just wants to protect the planet. Open Society Foundations, uh, another one that is listed as a major funder, founded by George Soros, aka the man who broke the Bank of England, aka the man who helped cause the Asian financial crisis of 1997. Newsmax.com, fast features, George Soros controversies. Take your pick. Is funding Sadiq Khan via the C40 cities. Porticus, I could find less on. Uh, it has 12 offices around the world and funds projects in areas such as education, healthcare, and Catholic faith, economic development, and climate change. So that is our major funders. Who are our smaller funders? Just listed as funders, not major funders. Well, we have American Express. I've already mentioned American Express. They score very badly on the ethical consumer thing. Uh, and ethical consumer highlights pollutions and toxics, animal testing, factory farming, workers' rights, irresponsible marketing, boycott call. There's a boycott call against this company. Political activities, anti-social finance, arms and military supply, human rights and climate change. All problems that have been highlighted by ethical consumer. And this company is financing C40 cities. And then we've got a couple that look a bit odd. We've got Bugaboo. They make car seats and push chairs, I think, from what I can tell. Correct me in the comments if you know more about them than I do. Maybe I've missed a clanger. And then the Climate Collaboration. And my note here just simply says these guys look decent. But what I found really interesting, as we get into some of these more obscure um, partners further down the line, you could spend 20 minutes on their website and still not have a chuffing clue who they are and what they do. What are these organisations and who are these people? If I go to a website, I want it to be able to say, all right, I'm Dave, I'm a plumber, and if you want your pipes fixed, and I can come around and fix them. Who you are, what you do, how you do it, how I get in touch with you. None of these foundations list any of those things on their websites, and they're all involved in this C40 Cities business. Great example of this, we have the European Climate Foundation. Um, I basically wrote in my notes, What? The science is clear. That's the only thing I managed to learn from their website. The science is clear. Uh, then we have FedEx, um, who out of a possible 15 points on ethical consumer score 7.5. I mean, they make American Express look good. That's largely to do with where they operate. They operate in some pretty heinous regions of the world and they don't care. Then we have the Global Methane Hub. And I've written, whoa, methane, cows, what? And on the Global Methane Hub, they themselves have another gigantic list of partners that they work with, which includes IKEA. Again, couldn't make head nor tail of it, but they're on and they're supporting the C40 cities. Next one, Google. Don't really need to say anything about that, do I? Next one, 
The KR Foundation, and on the board of the KR Foundation is Tim Jackson, who wrote the book Post Growth Life After Capitalism. It's almost like all of these organizations either know that there's a gigantic financial crash coming, or they're planning for it, or they're coordinating it. Then you've got the Mayor's Migration Council listed. Lots of stuff about climate migration, and again, I've written not really any clue. Then you have a pharmaceutical company called Novo Nordisk. Didn't take me long to dig up some dirt on them. They paid a huge fine for not complying with the law. This is from justice.gov. This was in the USA. A civil complaint filed in the US District Court for the District of Columbia asserted claims under the FDCA. The government alleged that at the time of Victoza, I presume that's a drug, at the time of Victoza's approval in 2010, the Food and Drug Administration required a REMS, REMS, to mitigate the potential risk in humans of a rare form of cancer called medullary thyroid carcinoma associated with the drug. The REMS required Novo Nordisk to provide information regarding Victoza's potential risk of cancer to physicians. A manufacturer that fails to comply with the requirement of the REMS, including requirements to communicate accurate risk information, renders the drug misbranded under the law. Novo Nordisk, the company that is supporting C40 Cities, the organisation that is supporting ULES, got in trouble with the US District Court for making a drug that caused cancer and not telling the doctors who were administering it that it actually causes medullary thyroid carcinoma. $58 million lawsuit. They sound like a nice bunch of people. I wonder if it gets any better. NREP didn't find so much on this, but they managed 7 million square metres of real estate across Denmark, Finland, Sweden, Norway and Poland. And they've committed to achieving a net zero real estate portfolio by 2028. How are they going to do that? Uh, and then there's 15 minute cities listed. The program will deliver proof of concept for 15 minute city policies and empower cities around the globe to implement ambitious net zero and people centred neighbourhoods. Let's read that again. Deliver proof of concept for 15 minute city policies and empower cities around the globe to implement ambitious net zero and people centred neighbourhoods. The past two years have witnessed a surge of interest in the idea of 15 minute city. No, they haven't. Nobody is interested in 15 minute cities. I want to go visit my family who live four hours away. The COVID-19 pandemic has galvanised discussions about the city as a system that enables citizens to live more locally and sustainably. It increases the opportunity for multiple complete neighbourhoods that cut emissions and improve quality of life in an integrated way. No, what you're saying here with your 15 minute cities is you're not trying to implement ambitious net zero people centred neighbourhoods. You're trying to implement ambitious net people zero centred neighbourhoods. It ain't good. Then you've got a company listed called Click, Q-L-I-K. It's big data and big data management. They work with PayPal, Ford, Deloitte, BP, Lloyds and the NHS. There's enough I could say about all five of those. Then you've got the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation. Um, and I found, again, I just Googled Robert Wood Johnson Foundation controversy and I found an article, science.org, private research funders court controversy, billions in secretive investments. The Trust does not highlight, however, that some of the more than $1.2 billion it has handed out annually in recent years comes from investments in companies that contribute to the same problems the philanthropy wants to solve. So this is a philanthropy company that hands out money to companies that want to do good things, but it gets some of the money from companies that are doing very bad things. You're starting to see a bit of a trend emerging here. Then you've got the SED fund, and I've just written, not sure, secret website, if anyone could tell me. Then you've got the Stavros Niarchos Foundation. The Stavros Niarchos Foundation was established in 1996 to honour Greek shipping magnate Stavros Niarchos. He was one of the world's largest transporters of oil and owned the largest super tanker fleet of his time. Yeah, he sounds really, really good for the environment. He should definitely be involved. Then you've got Velux. They make windows. And I've written, they'll make money out of forcing people to modify their houses. After Velux, we have the Wallace Global Fund. Scott Wallace is a Democratic politician, heir to the high-bred corn company fortune, grandson of former vice president and far-left presidential candidate Henry Wallace, 
and co-chair of the Wallace Global Fund, a funder of numerous left of centre organisations. And through the fund, Wallace has backed numerous groups backing left of centre economics, judicial policy and abortion laws. Sounds a lovely chap. Then you've got the Welcome Fund. Daily Mail article. British head science funding body Welcome Trust accused of chilling bid. So what happened here is Sir Jeremy Farrar said he had tremendous responsibility to be accountable. He was heading up the fund and he claimed the scientists know that COVID wasn't created in a lab. He said the theory was a conspiracy and he the, the, the mail on Sunday revealed email from US diseases chief Anthony Fauci. So someone at the Welcome Fund was in cahoots with Anthony Fauci to basically um, diss the COVID lab theory, which we now pretty much know as fact, don't we? That COVID was created in a lab. So this benevolent fund that is looking to help save the environment was actually involved in a gigantic smear campaign to stop the truth from being known. That's the funders. That was fun, wasn't it? Now we get on to the partners. The CDB Disclosure Insight Action. Well, I had a little look at them and I couldn't work much out, but one of the trustees is Ramakrishnan Mukundan, Managing Director and CEO of Tata Chemicals Limited. Do I need to say any more? Then you've got the Climate Leadership Initiative listed as a partner. They mobilise and channel the creativity, passion and generosity of philanthropists to address the most profound challenge of our time, climate change. We balance rigour with urgency in our work to nimbly engage donors with expert insights and tailored giving opportunities that cross-cut issues such as health, poverty, food, water, economic justice and biodiversity, all of which intersect with the climate. Looks good. But again, based on the company that you keep, I'm willing to bet that it's not. Next up, the Clinton Foundation. The Clinton Foundation is a partner with, partner with C40 Cities who Shadiq Khan works for, trying to push through the ULES, the Clinton Foundation. I could say a whole lot about them, but they've got their own conspiracy theory called the Clinton body count. I mean, sure, many people have come out and said the Clinton body count is just a conspiracy theory and it's not true. But I don't have a conspiracy theory about how many people I've killed to get Jeff Bice cars to the top. They do. <laughs> I want to cry. And then you've got Jizz. G-I-Z, right? And on their website, it says, violent conflicts and natural, natural disasters threaten the lives and livelihoods of millions of people worldwide. We support our partners in alleviating the structural causes of violent conflict and developing capacities for peaceful conflict transformation. Okay? Again, this is another company with a funky website, and I think I've worked out what they do. They're a gun for hire. We help them our clients, assure the safety of the population and reduce the impact of natural disasters and violent conflict by means of preventative measures, emergency aid and reconstruction programmes. In this way, we aim to stabilise fragile contexts in order to make development a reality for all sections of society. Our strength lies in linking short-term aid with long-term prospects. In the security sector, we support the demobilisation and reintegration of ex-combatants and provide advice on the build-up and reform of capable, democratically legitimate and monitored institutions. You will have to forgive me if my cynical self thinks that that is a company that facilitates small private armies going into war-torn regions and shoring up the supply of energy. I mean, call me a cynic, but that's exactly what I read. Then you've got EAT, which I couldn't find much about, right? So the, again, another partner with the with the C40 Cities thing. Listed on their board of directors, we have H.E. Mariam Bint Mohammed Al Mahir, Minister of Climate Change and Environment for the United Arab Emirates, as in human rights, as in everything involved in this. Then you've got George Monbiot, George Monbiot, right? Welsh minister currently trying to destroy Welsh farming. Another video on that coming soon. Then you've got, and this is an interesting one, on the board of EAT, which supports C40, which supports Sadiq Khan, Richard Horton, editor-in-chief at The Lancet. Which basically means that nothing that's published in The Lancet can go against the science. Remember we had that one earlier where it said the science is fixed? It's a very definition of science is that it's not fixed. Then you have... Dr. Jürgen Vogsel, VP for Sustainable Development of the World Bank. I've already touched on the World Bank. 
The World Bank, I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, has stopped giving loans to countries so that they can develop sustainable energy and instead is letting them build coal power stations. But where's the save the environment in that? It's almost like none of this is actually about saving the environment. Then you've got GW, which again, lovely website, lots on it. Very, very hard to work out who you are. I think they're a university. Um, and basically they claim that they provide unparalleled access to leading international institutions, multinational corporations, global media outlets and governments of 177 countries via their resident embassies. So this is a university that is claiming international reach in politics. Then you've got the ICCT, International Council on Clean Transportation, the second partner that I found with a website down. Then you've got the ITDP Institute for Transportation and Development Policy. And they are basically all about free. They, they say this, OK, listen to this and tell me they don't want to take your car away. Free on-street parking and road spaces that are only for cars are the norm in the majority of the world. These policies encourage driving, which increases congestion and restricts access to a minority of the world's people who own cars. <laughs> we will take your car off you and you will eat the bugs, but there will be plenty of parking. Not that there will be any parking to park there because there will be no cars. Then you've got the London School of Hygiene and Tropical Medicine. OK, I found this one quite confusing because I don't know why they're on there. But a Guardian article on them basically says that they benefited from colonial exploitation. Uh, the development of tropical medicine at the college was shaped by white supremacy and racist pseudoscience. The study sets out how the school, which was founded in 1899 for decades, received most of its funding from Britain's colonies, particularly those in Africa and colonial companies. But its medical research only benefited white people. Oh, look, another British company that claims to be doing lots of good things, making a great big mess in Africa for the benefit of a few people in white Britain. I'm quite happy to admit that, like, white privilege is a thing. OK, but I tell you what, and this gets on to some other stuff, doesn't it? There are companies in existence in the UK. There are people in existence in the UK whose wealth and property portfolio was built on the backs of dead black people. And we should be calling them out. If we're doing this whole, like, if we're going down the route of Black Lives Matter, if we're going down the rainbow thing and all lives matter and everybody matters and this stuff, then it matters where you got your money and your power and your influence from. Because if my ancestors got everything that I've got, because I fucked up your ancestors, I'd be pissed. Then you've got the World Bank listed again. And all I've written there is an entire can of worms. Brettonwoodsproject.org article. What are the main criticisms of the World Bank and the IMF? There's lots of them. Go and have a look. Then you've got the World Resources Institute. Guided by rigorous research and data analysis, we work with partners to implement on-the-ground projects and mobilise diverse coalitions to put the world on a more sustainable path. Literally, it's like it's been written by someone who used to be in the military. On-the-ground projects and mobilise. OK, that's feet on the ground going in to shore up energy supplies to protect the fossil fuel in in industry, isn't it? Then you've got the World Business Council for Sustainable Development, who are based in Geneva. Super shady organisation. Have a look on their website and try and work it out. One of the executive committee chairs is Alan Jope, CEO of Unilever. What does ethical consumer website say about Unilever? Our research highlights several ethical issues with Unilever, including environmental reporting, habitats and resources, palm oil, pollution and toxic, human rights, workers' rights, supply chain management, irresponsible marketing, animal rights, animal testing, factory farming, anti-social finance, controversial technologies and political activities. So everything. So the chairman of a company that is super bad is on the board of a... Council for Sustainable Development, who is a partner with the C40 Cities, who is trying to push through the ULES expansion via Sadiq Fura Khan. Uh, then I've also got on there the World Business Council that hosts Alan Joke from Unilever on its board, also has on its executive committee Sinead Gorman, Chief Financial Officer of Shell PLC. And then the last page, and you'll be glad to know, is a printer alignment page. And you can see that my printer is perfectly aligned 
but the interests of us real humans are not perfectly aligned with all of the funders and partners of the C40 cities who are trying to push through the ULES expansion via Sadiq Khan. These environmental policies are being pushed through with some very questionable people and businesses in the background. I hope that opened your eyes. Thank you very much indeed for watching.